this is going to be just a quick video a little bit out of context to what I'm doing at the moment preamps and, and the like which will continue very very shortly I promise I am working on them I was sent an email from one of the numerous Chinese companies making class D amplifiers I'm sure you know the ones I'm talking about. They asked me if I would be interested in reviewing one of their latest products. I could be interested. Tell me which product you have in mind and I'll tell you if I'm interested in reviewing it. But I pointed out that I didn't want to review anything with valves stuck in it. I don't mean a valve amplifier, but a, a transistor or IC amplifier with a valve in it in the, in the preamp stages. I see these little amplifiers handed out like sweeties or candy if you prefer. The people that by and large review them don't actually do any measurements and in some cases they don't even take the lid off. They just get the product and they show you them unboxing it say, oh yes, this has got a red piece of cardboard on it and this is that. To me, that's not a review. Anybody can do a review like that. So that's what's prompted me to make this little video. I've seen quite a number of amplifiers of late and they're predominant, well, they're all Class D which is another issue in itself, but you see a couple of valves sticking out of the top of the board or the top of the cabinet. And by and large, to be fair, they do look quite pretty and they do look sort of busy. The application of using a valve in these kind of circuits does nothing to the sound except destroy it. Most people that build a valve amplifier. I'm talking about the sort of more expensive ones. They cost a lot of money and the, the, the makers of these products that can cost many thousands of dollars are, are trying to get the best results out of a valve or tube, if, again, if you prefer. So I'm not really talking about those those manufacturers because that's a completely different ball game which I don't want to get into right now. I'm, I'm more concerned about using valves in a hybrid. I don't think they're a good idea. First of all, there are valves and there are valves. This is an EF86 valve designed in the early 50s by a company called Mullard. It was the response to people wanting a quality preamp valve which would have low noise, low micro microphony, whereas most valves by and large aren't designed to be specifically for audio. EL84 from Mullard KT88, KT66, EL34, all of which were designed largely for audio. EF86 is still available, made by other manufacturers today, but they are very expensive. Along with all of the valves I've mentioned in the past, no one is going to use such a valve these days in a low cost product. So what do they do instead? They use a valve that's designed for RF work. The reason is, like I've mentioned, the EF86 is very expensive and putting a pair of these in to a circuit that the whole product only costs $100 clearly is a non-starter. That should be the end of the topic. We don't have a valve suitable for this product. But no, they don't do that. They have a look around the market and they find there are thousands and thousands of cheap and nasty Chinese valves that were designed for RF work. They think, well, we'll stick a couple of these in there. It won't sound very good and won't work very well, but they're cheap 
they're on the surplus market and by and large the public that would buy this product have no idea what they are buying that's why I'm here to tell you what you're buying okay so we've now got an unsuitable valve that's not designed for audio high microphony low gain at audio frequencies and the next problem is most valves like a high voltage where are they going to get all these volts from a typical preamp valve would would like to see about 200 to 250 volts dc you clearly haven't got that when you're feeding it from an amplifier that works on 24 volts maybe up, up to 48 just prior to blowing up that is it would mean a quite an expensive conversion to generate these kind of voltages so again on a low cost 200 dollar we call it a, a nominal 200 dollar product it's out of the question what they do is feed it with usually a voltage doubling circuit of some sort and you will end up with about 30 40 volts on a good day on your uh, valve anode the problem with this is that will not operate the valve under linear conditions and in fact the valve will only just about conduct because the voltage is simply too low for the electrons to travel from one area of the valve to another one of the other effects of operating the valve under basically starvation conditions is you don't get enough gain out of it most of these preamps or amplifiers that you see on the market whether you like it or not that valve doesn't offer I won't say no gain but virtually no gain at all because it can't the voltage isn't high enough most of the gain is provided by 5532 chips brilliant chip may not be everybody's first choice but it's a pretty good chip what have we got we've got a valve that isn't designed for audio we're operating it with virtually no voltage and you've got virtually no gain so all the amplification particularly if it's got tone controls is done by old faithful 5532 after that preamp chip which has done all the work you put the valve in the circuit bearing in mind that the impedances are all over the place the outputs of most chips are inherently low impedance but yet the valve doesn't like a low impedance it likes a high impedance so you've got another mismatch there and when you come out of the valve you want a low impedance output but you've got a high impedance output so again you, you can get around that slightly by, by taking the output from the cathode of the valve rather than the anode but you, it's still not a good idea the people that are going to buy these products are going to buy it because of the valve sound even valve amplifiers you know a traditional five or six valve amplifier they try their best to get the THD total distortion down and the noise levels down but inherently a valve does not have a wide bandwidth it has a very poor slew rate if, if you watch the last couple of videos I've done showing you the speed of some of these amplifiers which truly give you beautiful attack detail which you don't get traditionally on valve amplifiers even a good one but this is not a good one we're talking about as I think you can deduce from what I've said so far this valve all it's doing if, if you have to be honest and brutal about it is add color distortion and it slows this diversify a bit the 5532 has a good slew, uh, slew rate and produces a near I say near because nothing's perfect a near perfect amplification adding so little of anything you've got your signal coming in 
it's going through that and it's now virtually the same but louder for want of a better word and then you put it in this valve and the first thing you're going to do is slow that slew rate that's hard to say down so instead of having a square wave that's beautiful and square and a fast rise and fall time it's going to be rounded so there goes all your detail all the attack and fastness that you get from a chip so now that's what you call the valve sound and the other thing it's going to add is copious amounts of harmonic distortion many years ago in fact just after i'd left technical college one of my first jobs was um, working in the laboratory with peter walker of quad He's sort of, apart from building the first or one of the first electrostatic speakers and the, the quad amplifiers, one of his sort of catchphrases, if you like, was quad, the closest approach to the original sound. And another comment, which I can't remember if he said it or somebody else brilliant in those days, is that an amplifier is a piece of wire with gain. Or should be but there is no such thing on the planet at the moment the reason I'm mentioning this is because when I talk about a hi-fi amplifier I mean one that basically what goes in comes out but with enough current and voltage to drive a loudspeaker if you have an amplifier that adds something to that sound then clearly it is not hi-fi in the real sense of the word the preamps that i've shown you in the last couple of videos they are so fast that they don't add any appreciable color to the sound this is why some people don't like them let's assume that you have a poor recording and sadly there are many available like that particularly today where so many record producers well I say record music producers have so much compression and no dynamic range on the music that some of them to me at least and many others sound almost unlistenable to they are just so compressed distorted and worst of all clipped so you get copious amounts of harmonics that weren't there on the original recording so now you've added this so when you listen to an amplifier that's fast it amplifies all these imperfections and it sounds like shit sorry to say it but that's what it is so people that have bought a fast amplifier they hear all this detail and they don't like it as indeed I don't if you have a quality recording and there are one or two out there not many more but a few and you play that through a fast amplifier that that shows up with good square waves it sounds unbelievably good the detail there is you're getting back to the straight wire in other words what went in comes out but louder which is the interpretation to me of hi-fi looking at it from another point of view i can understand people saying oh that sounds harsh i don't like it well it only sounds harsh because you're getting all the detailed crap off the recording if you listen to a good recording it just sounds unbelievable but here's where the valve comes in if you slow down the amplifier so it doesn't have all this detail and you put a poor recording in it actually can sound better not accurate but better because you've rounded off all the edges you slowed the amplifier down and you don't hear 
all the muck coming off the recording. So people say, oh, this, this amplifier sounds so much better. I can't argue with that comment if you like all your music to sound smooth and round with, with no detail, no, that's not true, with less detail, this kind of circuit induced by a valve can sound better. But it's not accurate. If you want accuracy, you don't get it from valves. You really don't. I mean, in 1940, they were brilliant. Things are, things are better now. Unfortunately, the things that should be better aren't. Recordings are, to my, I'm 75, I've been around a bit. This is why so many people say, oh, recordings from the 60s sound better. It's not because a lot of them were sourced on valves. It's because they weren't clipped. There was less compression. And you certainly don't have them squared off like you do now because of the loudness wars. So really, it boils down to this. If you like most music to sound OK, sticking a valve in the circuit may be your answer and i can't argue that if you if that's what you like then have it i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't dream of telling you not to have it if you are a true if you like audio file it's a horrible word i don't like using it adding a valve will mess things up and if you've actually got a pretty good recording, the distortion the valve will add, which is basically a huge amount of harmonics, it can appear to make it sound better. But you're adding something that wasn't there in the music to start with. But if you like that, fine. If you want accuracy and quality on some music but it will also amplify the crap from poorly recorded music you don't want to have these hybrid amplifiers but if you're quite happy to have all your music sounding okay not dramatic not horrible stick a valve in it that's the end of this rant thank you for watching